Every Thursday, I'll be talking to people in the public eye to try and discover a little bit more about what makes them tick. And my first guest is a comedian and club owner whose reputation precedes him. He needs no real introduction from me. Hello, Bernard Manning. Hello, Philip. You began as a Roman Catholic church choir boy. Now, that's not really today's image. What were you like as a lad? Uh, just like any ordinary lad, uh, played football, cricket, uh, did a bit of thieving at the shops. When we was on evacuation, we used to go into Woolworths and lift a few things like, you know. All the things that naughty boys do, smoking in the toilets, I've done it all, even when I, when I was younger. But you, you say you were normal, you weren't really a tear away, and were you somebody who you felt sort of well, you were popular, you fitted in, or did you feel a little bit that you were not? Well, I was always popular because I stood out because I was uh, fat. They used to call me Fat Man oh, really? at Mount Carmel School, and I could always belt the other kids about. He was always like, two ton heavier. So I was like the cock of the school. When I was uh, 12, I was the cock of the school. And uh, me, all, me brothers and sisters used to go to the same school and they used to come to me with the troubles. So-and-so was giving me a belt and I used to go and belt them, you see. When they called you Fat Manning, though, how did you feel? It didn't bother me, because I was fat. You were fat and you were comfortable with it, you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're thin, you're thin. And if you're fat, you're fat. <laughs> but I mean, I was a fat child too, and I remember 30 kids picking on me in the playground. I couldn't catch them, even though I could belt them. Yeah. Did you yeah. go through that? Well, no. Uh, it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me. Why do you think you were so fat? Uh, probably eating everything we could in them days, in the 30s. Uh, I was born in 1930, and uh, there was, they think there's a depression today, but in the 30s, that was a depression. There was no such thing as dole money or anything like that. If you were skint, you were skint, and that was the end of the story. My father used to go, uh, he was a breadman for the Cooperative Society, a breadman, mm. and his wage was uh, £2.50 a week, and there were seven of us. And that's the honest to God's truth. So it really was hard? Well, you had to eat all the offal, oxtails, sheep's heads, didn't affect us. <laughs> Not a lot. What's your worst memory of that time? My worst memory, uh, going to school and seeing kids come to school my, uh, with no shoes on and wearing the father's trousers cut down, you know, comical it was, really comical. But it was, uh, it was a terrible time and my mother, who's 91 today, she really uh, loved us all and worked day and night, did every job. Conce every conceivable she, job, taking washing in and... She, she sacrificed herself almost. Exactly. Yeah, she, she, nothing yeah, was too, too that's much. That's right, exactly. So you really feel very proud of her. Oh, very... absolutely. Yeah. Was she almost overprotective of you or not? No, we used to get a crack when we was naughty. Why? I remember one time I was in the Blakely Cooperative store and I got my hands on a, a couple of plums in a box mm -hmm. and I was just going to put one in my mouth and I got a wedding ring right across... Bang! Yeah. Never pinched them more after that. So you learned what was right and wrong from her. Exactly. What about becoming a joker? Were you a, a, I mean, you say that people used to call you fat manning, you'd, you'd belt them one. When, yeah. did you, when did you become humorous? Well, at school you tell all these pattern mix stories when we were in the 30s, like, you know, mm -hmm. and we'd be in the air aid shelters and uh, something to strike us funny, something about Hitler or something about Goebbels or Goering, you know, mm -hmm. and you'd be telling jokes and, uh, impressions of George Formby and all that carry on. That's how it started. Getting everybody in a nice, happy mood. And it made you popular? Yep. So it was worth doing? Well, they used to say, come on, give us a song, Bernard, okay. and all that carry on. When, when did the hostility and the humour sort of, because there, there is hostility, so the joke's always on someone. Mm. When did that sort of start with you? Uh, in the clubs. I, used, I started as a singer, and then when I came back from... Uh, from the, from singing in London, mm. I started as a compare at the Northern Sporting Club just up the road here. Mm. And uh, if you're a compare, you just can't just be a singer and do nothing else. I started doing a bit of ad-libbing. Mm. Uh, if a fella came in tall, like this gentleman you've got on the show today, tall fella, you'd say, uh, I bet in a windy day you twang, or did you fall asleep in the greenhouse? Uh, something to do with him being tall, or anybody who was bald, yeah, look at this fella, desert head. Now, they, they say that some of your jokes are pretty offensive to, to black people or to women. Now, whether they are or not, let's leave that aside. If they did hurt people, would that bother you? 
Uh, well, it would, but it doesn't. It doesn't hurt people. Uh, you sure? Yeah, well, positive. We get, I get coloured people in my, in my club. I get Chinese, I get uh, uh, West Indians that's born here. Uh, and all that carry on. They take it, they throw their head back and laugh. I guess. Let me just switch. Have you ever truly been in love? Love? Love. Oh, yeah. Of course. With whom? With my wife. How long were you with her? Uh, 36 years. Married. And uh, we met when we was about 18. I'd just come out of the army. Uh, I kissed her under the mistletoe at Small and Park's uh, break line his club. I took a Christmas dance there. And uh, that was it for 36 years. We courted for seven, saved every penny we could, bought this little semi-detached, which we lived in until she died. And, uh, oh, yeah. It's only, you only love once, in my opinion. She was absolutely central to your life. Oh yes, oh yeah. What what do you uh, what do you miss most about it now? Coming home at night. Uh, when I come in, I'll be at Blackpool tonight. I'll come in late, uh, about half past one, half past two, and it's just uh, nothing there. So it's a real total emptiness, is it? Oh yeah. Well, not total emptiness because I've got my son and my grandson, and I've got all the family. My mum's. Uh, my mum's still living, thank goodness, and she keeps me going. She's funny, you know. But when you come home to... to uh, when you come home... Uh, when we was married, we came home and... Uh, she'd probably make a cup of coffee. She'd always wake up, make a cup of coffee, have a sandwich, have a little chat, whatever. Mm. And well, that you... doesn't happen no more. So she was the, the one person for you? Oh, yeah. You didn't stray, you didn't look at anybody else? No, no. And now she's gone. When I say I didn't look at anybody else, but I didn't stray. <laughs> I mean, do you sometimes find that it's it's so much harder just to keep going now? No, my work keeps me going. Uh, Vera uh, wouldn't want me to be mopesing and being miserable, so I'm not miserable and I don't mopes. So I get on with my work, I get up in the morning mm. and I do the embassy club and then I go into somebody else's club and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday I'm working theatres and I'll probably go to Scotland, or I'll probably go to uh, from London or whatever. From church choir boy to club owner, blue comedian, whatever. In, in just three, three words, how would you sum yourself up? How would I sum myself up? Uh, a success, a big success. I've got a good family. Uh, nobody lives forever, and so I'll be joining Vera one day. And uh, I've made plenty of money, uh, we're not short of anything. And I shall leave my son well fixed and my grandson well fixed and it's been very well worthwhile. Bernard, thank you. Thank you, Phil. Just as Philip said, burning, Bernard Manning as you've never seen him before. It's going to be a good series that. Look forward next week to Philip's interview. Now